This is Solar Man. Today I'm going to teach you how to DIY this wonderful axial flux hub motor that you can build for yourself. You can use four of these things to power a buggy uh, that you can ride a single person on. Or even better, I am going to use this very powerful motor to power four of the turbine uh, on the Solar Man turbine electric plane. I'm going to post a video about that turbine electric plane in the future using these hub motors. Today I'm going to teach you how to DIY these wonderful electric motors. Uh, you can download these uh, STL files in the link link below that consists of four files, four components. Uh, the first component being the right hand side of this half wheel and the left hand side of this half wheel is another file and also you have the stator that you have to wind uh, one mm wire or gauge uh, 18 wires these are uh, one mm wires uh, on to provide the uh, electromagnetic force to drive the motor to turn around and also there's a four file that fix the axle here you can see two uh, pretty big size uh, bearing uh, on both sides of the wheel uh, and then you have an axle there, the axle ties into this uh, triangular hub that you will see later that would uh, fix the stator wire in the center so the, uh, the center here is your motor hub uh, the motor axle, okay? Alright, let's have a look at how this works now this is turning and you see the axle is here and you have an exploded view. This is a stator which actually doesn't turn and what you have is that this three point would kind of make it uh, tie together. Uh, so that's how it works, okay? I'm going to tell you uh, the, the reason why this works. Now if you explode the view, you have two half of the wheel. The magnets are placed on the hub. So these are the rotors and you can count the altogether 20 magnets and these are very powerful N52 magnets that are of size 1cm by 1cm by 1cm and not only they are very close to each other exerting a fairly big magnetic uh, field on this stator you have two sides of it so that you can place another 20 very powerful N52 magnets on this side and once you, uh, these are basically places where you can screw the two things together as you can see on this thing here these are the uh, screws so that you can put the two half together okay uh, all right and then you have these spokes that are very strong they're uh, printed in nylon to provide you very powerful uh, torque all right so if you look at this you have 20 magnets on one side 40 magnets all together so it makes it uh, fairly heavy uh, and powerful and you place uh, these uh, pretty uh, big uh, magnet, uh, bearings on either side and then the center would be the axle for, the, uh, for your uh, bucket. Alright, so once you uh, have placed the magnet, uh, north pole, south pole, north pole, south pole alternating and likewise for the same uh, polarity uh, on the other side, okay? Here we see a picture of the stator winding. Now, if you remember, there are 20 magnets on one half of the wheel. So 20 magnets makes 10 pairs of poles. So if you have three faces for each pair of poles and three faces for each pair of poles, therefore you have 20, uh, 10 pairs of poles times three equal to 30 slots. So altogether you have 30 slots of winding for each of the face. So you have face A turning four of these turned. You wind it in a clockwise manner. Now you see that this is kind of triangular. So this side face one half of the wheel's uh, magnet and the other side face the other half of the wheel magnet. So this is a triangular kind of winding. And then after you've done with this slot, uh, and then you do four, three, two, three, four. And then you jump onto the next face and then you likewise wind for them. Now, they're all together uh, 10 pairs of poles. So you will have all these face slots being each one consisting of four uh, turns. 
and you will have all together 40 for each uh, uh, phase of 10 slots and all together you have 120 of these turns, right? So now this is very powerful largely because you use a very thick wire, in this case here these are 1 mm thick wire US gauge, uh, American gauge uh, size uh, of uh, 18, okay? So that's 1 mm thick. So you wind this four turns, you jump to the next phase for phase A, you wind another four turns, you jump to the next phase, phase A, and so on. And then you wind the phase B and so on. Afterwards, you get what you saw earlier, the winding pattern uh, that you have uh, shown here. You can see that basically you have coming up here, the neutral wire of the ending uh, for the uh, starting point of the phase A, phase B, and phase C being fused together. So this is a Y pattern of connectivity for the three-phase motor. Now this is the phase A wire, the phase B wire, and the phase C wire. Now we set the voltage to be at 5 volt, and this is the current, right? And once it started turning, you, read, you can read the RPM over here now, it's about 3,000. Uh, uh, 3, uh, it's fluctuating, but it was stabilized because of the reading is not accurate at this point. So it stabilized at around 4,000 RPM. For which you have about 3 amps, uh, 3 amps of power. Now I'm going to explain a little bit how motor works. Now the speed of the motor is determined by the voltage, the motor phase. So in a sense, you have to measure the KV, which is the RPM per volt of, uh, uh, of voltage applied to the motor. That's called KV. And in the earlier example, you see we roughly have a 5 volt for which it turns at uh, 4,000 RPM. So that's roughly about 800 volt, uh, 800 RPM per Per volt. That's the KV number of this motor. It's very powerful. Now, you saw that it only had a current of less than 3 ampere. Now, the voltage determines the terminal velocity, okay? So, because as it turns faster and faster, it provides a back EMF, okay? And so, the higher the voltage it is, the faster it will have to turn, you know, generate enough back EMF to counter the voltage you supply. Now, the Torque of the motor is determined by the amperage. The higher the ampere uh, that in, in your situation, the more you have a torque. Now the torque here is double because the triangular wiring faces a magnet on this side as well as on the, the other side. And therefore it provides twice the torque, whereas the amount of wire is actually, you're using two thirds of a turn to provide a very high torque. So torque is determined by two things. One is determined by the current and also determined by the number of magnets you have. The more magnets you have, the larger radius, the, the more the top force is, okay? So that's how it works. So what you see here is that it's 10 ampere and the current is going up to also still at 3 ampere, largely because there's not much of a load as this is free spinning. So if you have a mechanical load, basically turning a turbine blade or turning a bucking motor, you will find the effort to go up to 10 ampere or even 20 ampere, and therefore providing about 200 watts of power. This axle flux uh, hub ma uh, motor can also be used as a regenerative braking device. So when it turns, it will generate a voltage and then you can have the voltage tied to a low or tied to a, an AC to DC converter converting electricity that you can store back into the battery. So this would be very useful for regeneration of energy uh, when your buck, uh, buggies uh, slow down or when the airplane uh, turbine uh, blades would slow down, okay? So I hope you understand the theory as well as how you may be able to build a a buggy axial flux hub motor for yourself or in, for my case I would be building four of these turbine blades for my turbine electric uh, plane that is going to be powered by a gas turbine and I'm very excited about my gas turbine uh, power electric plane because it would be able to have much higher efficiency 
meaning that it can be as fuel efficient as a uh, as a, an electric car, even better than an electric car because of the way I designed the aerodynamics. Okay, uh, feel free to download the files for your own DIY at the link below. If you want me to provide you the whole kit for your, you yourself to DIY, uh, leave a note in the comment section saying that I do want a DIY kit. If there's enough demand for that, I would sub, uh, I'll be selling this DIY kit at a particular cost. Okay, so please like this video if you're fascinated by the motor and also subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I'm Solomon.